All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Winter Circle call. Hope everybody had a good uh, three-day weekend last weekend. I cannot believe. That's just like, was it July 10 minutes ago? Man, crazy. It's hot anyway. here. It feels like it's 110 here. It feels like it's July. It's been brutal. We did open houses this weekend. People were coming in just to get out of the heat. Excellent. Good. I got some hot questions for you, Nate. Good to see you, Leanne. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to be here. Thank you. Okay. We got Chris. We got Aria. Leanne, good morning. Hey, I, I want Leanne to be on my team and she won't do it. She wants just to stay single. Yeah, good. Frank, say something good about me as we go through here. She's like, I don't need you. I could do this myself. She no. is a good agent. A lot Give of me experience. all your hot leads and I'll join. Come on. <laughs> One thing about me, me, Nate, as I get older, I will never tell a woman what to do. No, you can't tell them anything. And you get make them either you just have to hope they want to, to, to listen to you <laughs> yeah well anyway everybody thank you if you know of anybody text them and tell them we got our call going on but i got some questions for everybody and i'm i'm i've got some really some really gosh i don't know what i'm trying to say but but i've noticed not with nate and elgin because those guys just kill it all the time that it has really been slowing down uh, business wise and people writing contracts so I'm going to start it off with Nate. Nate, tell me about your open houses. What are they like? What is the environment? And the questions you are asking and some of the uh, remarks you're going to be getting from John Q. Public. Yeah, so great, great. Um, our open houses have actually been really good. Um, it does depend. We've noticed from property to property. I will say that. Some of them, nobody comes. In the and some of them will have 30 couples come. So it's definitely people are buying, but they're they're buying specific. And <clears throat> what that tells me is people are not buying for fun. They're not just out. If it's a property that they really want, location they want to be in, they're coming in. Um, okay. We're seeing good offers on, on really good properties. What I would say doesn't need a lot of work, big backyards, anything special in, in, in our market right. is flying. Anything that's marginal, is just sitting unless you really price it aggressively. So we're seeing some things that are really nice still sell for higher than it's ever sold before. Uh, I just sold, you know, one for the market price over, uh, you know, here in town or whatever. And then I've had stuff where we've had a price reduction, price reduction, price reduction, price reduction, can't get any showings. So that's what's happening. The first few weeks, because we do a lot, so many open houses, the public seemed crazy confused with the new contracts. Shocker. Okay, well, which was fine. And we and it was like, oh my gosh, are they ever going to be able to get it? Well, one thing that kind of surprised me this weekend, I just had a, a Zoom with my team be right before this one. And we noticed this week we didn't get all the questions. No, people weren't as scared. People weren't so so for me, I've been wondering, is it going to be business as usual once the public figures out how this works? Or is it going to be mayhem? And I, I kind of am starting to think I didn't open. I've been doing open houses myself just to hear the dialogue. And I think people are going to get it. And I think it's 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 going to it's going to be fine. And I think it's probably a better thing. Um, I think they have to get used to they don't get to use real estate agents for fun for free anymore because they have to sign contracts. So um, but we've been busy. But here's what we've been experiencing. And I don't know with you guys. I had, I know we had like 21 homes in escrow. I had, and I personally, just my personal ones, I had four monsters fall out in the last 10 days of my mm. ones of my listings. So, so I was trying to explain to the team, what does that mean for us? And I tried to go back and think, and all four of these properties, the agent was more excited to get the deal into escrow than the buyer. Okay, so I think what, if I could give you guys any advice when you have your listings out there, just because an agent calls and says, I have 25 years or you know the agent and they're solid, they're so excited because agents are hurting because you can look at our rev share and tell there's not a lot of deals closing, right? So, I mean, that, that runs cool. I think the agents are more excited to get the deal. So when they call you, act all excited. There's no way we're falling out. We love this property. We have to have it. Make sure you call the lender. Make sure that you investigate a little bit about who the family is. You can only ask certain questions, understand. I would say just keep top of mind that these agents really need those escrows, which is a good thing. But but I've lost four big ones this week. I got to resell them, you know, and um, luckily we have more than that in escrow, but that's tough. So that's what we're seeing and I've been experiencing. If I could ask without going into detail, just 
30,000 feet. Why did you lose them? Great question. So here's what we're seeing. Two were just BS excuses. The guys, the people changed their mind. Okay. I have 2, 2, 000, 000 in Venice. The Ooh. guy, the guy, the agent was so excited, said he saw this property. And then he went to what's it called? Burning man out in the desert. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He has to have it. He wants me to write the offer, set the inspections. Then the guy comes back. He had 2 million proof of funds. And he, he just made up some excuse. Oh, um, the inspection was bad. And there's nothing on the inspection. So that was more of just, I changed my mind. Okay. Another one was a local agent in town here. Great agent. And the parents talked them out of it, right? When it was time to explain the contingency. So they just kind of changed their mind and they said the HOA was too strict. So that was a Dutch two that just changed their mind. Okay. Okay. The third one was a $2 million property. And the, uh, there was something in the CCRs that prohibited them from running a business out of their home. So they got scared. Might maybe that's more legitimate, right? Okay. And the other one was repair request. So what we are seeing on our team and what me and Fanny and I are going crazy with our folks are with this many escrows, the repair requests are crazy. Like they're asking for everything. I mean, some of them, the one repair request we have was 125,000, but that's okay. It was the 1920s in Hollywood. But a lot of stuff, 5,000 fix fix list this big. Okay. So buyers are nervous and I think they don't have a lot of money and they're just buying because they have to, they're squeezing in and they want the house to be perfect. So all different reasons, but just a lot of buyers being hesitant, buyers being on edge. That's what we're seeing. So 21 escrows and you had four fall out. Now that's four were just mine. That's my personal. I had, I have about nine, my personal listings in escrow. Four of them fell out. Wow. This week, this week, it was over a hundred thousand in commission. Okay. I'm going to continue with you, Nate, being that you're making it happen. Tell me about some of the conversations you're having with buyer's agents that are calling you and asking for compensation. Well, most of them don't know that they're not allowed to ask how much. So, I, so buyer's agents that are calling me, they're not, a, they're, they're not supposed to ask you, will your buyer, will your seller pay 2% to and a half how much compensation? They're supposed to just say, will your buyer cooperate? So I'm not educating them to offend them because I still want their business. Right. And I'm like, so I say, hey, I have a wonderful seller. He knows the value of a buyer's agent. And so do I. I just want to let you know, I want to work with you, not against you. So please submit your offer with whatever you, whatever you've agreed to on your buyer's broker's agreement. And I'll submit that to my seller. And he's more than happy to look at it or she, you know, they are more than happy to look at it for compensation. And everybody's usually really okay with that answer. But I can tell the people who aren't educated, who aren't being trained, who aren't in groups like this or on teams or have anybody to really, ones that are just kind of wander alone out there. They're like, how much, how much, right. how much, right? So, so they're doing that. I think what my team meeting tomorrow is going to be, because what here's what I'm seeing in my team, and this might be a good reflection of, around, is my agents are feeling guilty for not bending over and giving away all of their commission because they want the, their, their buyers to get the house of their dreams if there's one or two offers. Does that make any sense? So it used to be that commission was locked. You didn't have to negotiate your commission. So in their mind, the buyer always comes first, but the buyers are trying to use their commission as a pot. Does that make any sense? Oh, it's a gold pot. Let's just take it out for everything. And I'm like, no, the DOJ just gave you permission that you're as important as your buyer. So you're going to have to be more business oriented and explain to your buyer up front that this commission is not my fee is my fee. Now, if you want to come, if you put two and a half and you want to come down to two, that's your business. But I have agents feeling guilty because their buyer didn't get the house they want because somebody took one person took three quarters of a percent and beat one of my agents out. Oh. Okay. So here's here's what I here's what I said to that wow. person, and they, they and I, I was talking to that person, and I said, and they go, Nate, they're losing their dream home because of me. I go, they're not losing nothing because of you. They're losing it because they wouldn't know they wouldn't pay the fee that they agreed to pay. They are not looking out for you, so you need to change your mindset. You are feeling guilty. That's like giving your kid everything they want, but it was their dream home. I said, I'm an adult. There's a lot of things I don't get that I want in my life. You didn't get the house you want. How many million houses are there? They're all the same anyway. Okay. 
So go find another house. So I'm trying to change my team's mindset because when they changed the rules, they gave us permission to make us important too. My commission is just as important as your dream house. My feet, okay? So I'm having to change my folks' minds. Then brand new agents that don't know any different that I've hired, it's going to be a piece of cake. But people who are used to working, for, showing hundreds of properties yes. and getting paid and giving everything away, and they have to change their mindset where they're important too, right? And their fee, they're going to have to stand up for themselves like attorneys. Another thing that I've noticed is they're complaining about the the listing agent being bullies. So what uh -huh. I said, so what I said, tell well, me why, more. So I said, why wouldn't they? I'm like an attorney. I'm working for my seller. If you call me and you're a big pushover and I can take all your commission for my seller, I'll give you a half a percent. You give me more my seller than I make. He makes more money. That's my job. If you go into court, are you complaining that the one defense attorney is better than you? You're going to have to step up your game. You have to fight for what you want. You have to, you know what I mean? So I think it's a mindset. You can't say, well, this is unfair. The listing agent has an advantage. No, you have to be strong and you have to be skilled and you have to be able to negotiate, right? So that's just some things that we're seeing on a larger level. Guys, in the last 15 minutes, this was huge. And that's why everybody here today, thank you for being here because you just learned in 15 minutes a great lesson from a top producer in some of the challenges that he's having and how to overcome. So I applaud you for being this morning. Does anybody have any questions for Nate? Leanne. Are you, as the listing agent, asking for any evidence from the buyer's agent on what their commission was when they submit uh, what they want? Buyer's agent wants 3%. Are you asking for the signature page showing that they have 3% in their BRBC? You don't need it. The only thing you say when they when they submit to you, and forgive me for not knowing the acronyms because Fanny does, I don't touch paper. When 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 I when they submit, when we submit our offer, I'm asking for a certain amount, but no, uh, I do not ask to see what they did with their client. That's none of my business. No. So if they I'm not asking to see that, I'm just submitting it and negotiating the offer just like it was with anything else. And I I will, I am, and here's another thing, and Ricky Caruth uh, says this very well. He says, listen, guys, if you go in trying to force your sellers to agree to a two and a half percent commission when you're taking listings, you're going to lose listings. Don't do it. He goes, so you might want to suggest that they need to cooperate, but don't do it. Wait until you get your listing. Wait until you get under contract. And then, you know, then you negotiate that commission. So <clears throat> what I do when I take my listings, I'll put, you know, three percent as my fee or two and a half, depending on if it's, it's a savvy client, whatever I negotiate. So typically it's two and a half or three. And then if a non-represented buyer comes in, if I can get away with it, I put another three for six, right? And then I say that they're willing to cooperate. So it'll be either or. So 6% is what I try to get. And I, I try to get both ends if I can. But a lot of my people are savvy. So I'll say two and a half percent if I sell it. One and a half percent if a non-represented buyer comes. That's a total of four. So I would get four. I've sold two houses that way on open houses. But I said, you may you're probably going to get a two and a half percent. So it'll be either or. So you could pay 4% or 5%, right? And I have not had one seller balk at that, okay? And the ones that I think I can get the full six, I'll go three, three and a half, my fee, two and a half if it's a non-represented buyer for six. And I said, or you might have to pay two and a half percent to the other broker. Is that okay with you? That sounds fine. So that's what I try to do, but I'm not forcing my people to do anything. I have one lady with a $2.8 million home and she goes, this is great. I'm not paying the buyer's agent. I said, okay, we've been sitting on the market 118 days <laughs> with four showings. I said, okay. And she goes, well, I'm losing money. I said, okay, that's fine. And she's like, why am I not getting any showings? I was like, well, you, you know, I don't know your, your price. So what I'm saying is when that offer comes through, I'm not going to fight with my client. I'm just going to say, well, you've been on the market. I know you're losing money. You overspent to remodel this property, but here, here's an offer. Would you want to take this or leave it? They're asking for two and a half percent commission. So she's not going to let the deal fall apart because she's underwater. So just that's another thing that I could say. Don't fight with your sellers over. If you got a property with 10 offers on it, you might be taken. You have to advise them on the best offer. Maybe a two and a half percent is the best offer. It's not always just commission. Could be a better buyer. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay, does anybody else have a question for Nate? Okay, Elgin, are you still here? Yeah, that's me on the screen. Okay, 
What are you seeing with your transactions since August 17th? A lot of the stuff that Nate said, and, and Nate, Nate is on a larger scale uh, with a larger team, obviously, than, uh, than than I have. But what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing personally, so on the on the seller side, uh, I was already doing that it's exactly what Nate's mm -hmm. saying, the same thing. It's where I I go in, I go in with my commission, and I also go in with different net sheets. I go in with different net sheets uh, showing uh, 2%. Two and a half percent and three percent uh, selling office fee, and so I let them see what their bottom line is going to be based upon when the offers come. And I tell them, I'm just telling my sellers that we want to be open to seller concessions, and then once we get our offers in, we'll evaluate them on the bottom line. And I have not had any. I have not had. I've not had. I almost had some pushback kind of once. We won, what, and, and it was funny because it was actually a seller that I had already had on the market prior to the 17th because, you know, we had to have those discussions with them and change the contracts and all of that. So she fought me a little bit. Um, and then it was kind of an easier thing, as I had uh, said, you know, pretty much what Nate said to his client was that, I mean, you know, we've been on the market already and it's not like we're getting a ton of showings and you're not sold yet and you want to take money away from the possibility of an agent showing it and bringing us an offer and you're not looking to lower your price. That doesn't, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah. You know, but you know, I didn't say it like that, but for those of you that know me, you know, I said it very similar to that. And, um, and then, you know, that she, and she was fine with it uh, after that. Uh, I know that Pilar just put one in with, uh, with, with one of her buyer's agents. She didn't have any issues with it, you know, at all on the, on the, on the, on the buyer side. I am seeing uh, I'm at the agents that are calling me that ask me uh, about the commissions. Only thing I'm telling them is that the seller is open to seller concessions, and they'll ask me about you know uh, pricing, you know uh, similar to what they're saying to Nate. But all that I'm telling them is listen, submit submit your offers, and um, my seller is aware of different net sheets. Showing their bottom line based upon paying a a seller's pay, paying a paying a buyer's agent's concession. And I'm just I'm not supposed to say commission anymore. Uh, and and that's been you know and and, and that's that sufficed. I did have pushback from one agent recently who happened to catch me on not the greatest of days. So the pushback wasn't long. It's like show it or don't show it. But this is the deal. You know I'm not going to give you a number. You know I'm not going to give you a number. And I, I you know I didn't. Do it. I did not know what Nate said that you're not supposed to give a number, but to me it made sense if I'm representing my seller anyway to not give a number. Why would I give away any negotiating strength of my seller, you know, up front? I am seeing uh, between people that are that we're working with in our rev share team and myself, I am seeing a much, I, I am seeing it being a little bit more difficult to get the escrows closed. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely seeing that. I'm seeing the same that actually I, I just I just got a repair request before getting on before getting on uh, on, on our call. And it, it's funny because this particular repair request, unlike the one that the, the, the Nate was speaking of, basically, they just all of a sudden want additional, you know, like ten thousand dollars of credit. Uh, which really goes back down to what their original price was when they came in with the offer. I mean, that's an old trick, man. That's an old trick. So they, so they basically want to, they basically want to take the ten grand off what they originally offered. So that's going to be a fun conversation with my seller, <laughs> you know, later on. I'm also, and, and, you know, you, you know, you have to be a, you know, negotiated, and you you want to be a, you know, you have to be a little bit harder sometimes, but you also don't want to lose the deals. I'm, I'm saying uh, people really just ignore their contingency periods. I mean, you know, you want to get the physical inspection done in seven days, and then it's like, you know, day eight. And, oh, yeah, uh, can we, we need to get an, ext an extension for, you know, stuff like that, and which obviously stresses the seller out and, you know, and all that other kind of stuff, because then it's, okay, well, what do you do? You know, so okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put our notice of form in, and da, da da. Are you really prepared to do that? Are you ready to, to you know? So you know, all those, all those, all those types of things, which are, to me, fun times. For you can tell when the market is is adjusting 
or shifting or there's something different. And I, I have just seen a lot of people sit on their hands. I'm seeing a whole lot of people, you know, I've been doing a lot of videos on it where I'm seeing people that are buying and they're say they want to buy or we're going to buy. And yeah, well, we want to see what the interest rates are going to do. The interest rates are going down because they said the rates are going to go down in September the 18th, or whatever the date is. And then they said they're going to get five more reductions, all of that. And I'm like, well, he said they're going to have six this year. And you ain't got one yet. I mean, so, you know, you know, so you, so you have that. And so then I don't know, Nate, if you're experiencing this. So then I, on the stellar side, I'm like, hey, you know, I mean, you know, you know, we all know if we're, if we're, if we're, if we're getting either no activity or we're getting a lot of activity, but we're not getting offers, it's something with the price at the end of the day. But, you know, I'm saying sellers, well, I don't want to reduce the price yet because they're about to get an interest rate. And when the interest rates go down, everybody's going to be buying and I'm going to be losing money. I don't mind waiting another 30 or 60 days. It's like, okay. So, you know, you know, you know that that type of stuff. So, then you always have to decide which seller has the best motivation and which sellers are going to really fight you over uh, 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 the reduction that you're about to get into an altercation about it. Or you sit back and wait and just kind of let it happen a little bit more naturally. So, you know, my nature is to like to fight for it. And I'm really uh, fighting my nature is that, you know, I'm going to sit back and kind of let some things happen. I'll agree with Elgin on that. Um, my nature is to push things forward so I can have my closings the way I need them. But what, I, what I've learned uh, lately is, you know what? If I got a big fat bill that I got to back pay and I got to close everything, in three week period, like all my summer in a three week period, like my September was going to be almost half my year, right? Like it's better just to sit back, be patient, let the showings not come in, let the offers not come in and let the, the people go through the process. It's kind of like letting the buyers go through the process of losing a couple homes. Sometimes we don't want that. We want to tell them, Hey, if you do this, you're going to lose the home because we don't want to keep showing homes. Right. But man, it's better just to let them go through the process I just took over a listing. They canceled their agent was on a hundred days and he agreed to cancel and they're overpriced. So I, they, and he had been talking to me the whole time, but I didn't say anything. They, I let them do three price reductions. And then I went in and tried to get another price reduction. It's still too high. He said, no, I said, okay. So I put the property on the market, did all the stuff I said I was going to. And then when he's only getting the same thing happened with me, cause this other agent didn't do a bad job. He just needed to blame it on somebody. So when he thought I was going to be the hero and now he's still only getting two showings a week, he'll lower that price at some point. So I'm hopefully picking up the difference. So I'm like a Elgin, I think being patient. I also think if you hear how in, in control, like top producers, like Elgin, if you talk to him, he, he basically, you, he, he tells you what to do and he tell he has ask you, he tells you. So I think that confidence for anybody here that's younger or newer, you just say yes. Because when, when I'm doing that and I'm really explaining something that they don't know, I'm telling them what the right answer is. You do that with confidence and authority, you can usually make things happen. But hey, they don't all listen to you, do they, Elgin? All, all these nope. sellers listen, no, no, no. So you just do your best, shake it all through the strainer, look at the end of the year and, okay, I closed 95% of everything I thought I was going to and I lost five deals. So that's just the way it works. Yeah, yeah so that's the way it works, and you know, and and you, you know, and you know what else? Like for me personally too, is when you take the attitude like that, and you say it very similar to like what Nate is saying, is it takes a lot of stress off of yourself personally, you know, because you put a lot of you put a lot of stress on yourself, and you take a lot of the buyers and sellers' stress, and you put it on you. It's almost like you know, sometimes, you know, even back in the old days and we were doing a lot of short sales and all of that, I have to actually tell a few sellers kind of, kind of, you know, matter of factorly, matter of factly and kind of bluntly that I'm not the one behind my payment and I'm not the one losing my house. So you guys, so I'm here, to, I'm your, I'm your, I'm your, I'm your, I'm your solution, not your problem. So as tough as that may sound, you know, I had a year that I did 60 short sales and, you know, you go to bed every night with everybody's problem. They're all they're all jumping the problems on you, and you go. You're the one that's going to bed tossed and turning, and not sleeping, and they're sleeping like babies because they've been able to dump their problems onto someone. So I learned, I, I learned during that period, and it's again, my, you know, my nature is to take it a little bit more personal, but to 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 you know, and to do whatever you do whatever you have to do uh, uh, personally to make sure that you can um, uh, sustain yourself. Hopefully you've been putting money away. Hopefully you've have got some assets. 
Hopefully, you know, you, you know, you put some cash away, whatever it is, so that you and, and, and don't be afraid to um, do some of those things, you know, to, to restructure some of your own stuff so that you don't have the stress on you. Because that, you know, because when the market is, the market is going to pretty much, in my opinion, it's going to be murky like this, at least to the end of the year. To me, it's going to be murky um, just because of the elections and things like that and everybody's opinions and all this other junk going on. And then the policies, And if you guys go into any of the, the, the real estate mastermind chat groups, most of the time it's just a dump fire of people complaining and crying and not, hey, you know what? It's, it's almost like, Get yourself in position. Just do your thing. If you do your thing all of the time, stuff happens. People actually call you. You know, you've worked in your database and some other things. You get your loose ends, make sure you tie them up and 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 try not to take it personal and to understand. I think what Nate was saying and what I'm trying to say in a long-winded way is things happen on their own time. They have uh, there's there's just certain things that you're not going to be able to do nothing about. Okay. So you might you control well, everything. Yeah, you okay. might as well do your best, and then and you know, and then just keep them pushing forward. But the people that are going to get in the most trouble from agents, you you all uh, hopefully no one is here is one of those agents. But we all know some. If you don't know them, you'll see them. Are the people that quit? There are a lot of people that quit, and they don't even know they quit. But they're not doing anything positive. If you ask them to open what they, their schedule was, what did they do today? They didn't do nothing. They didn't do nothing the whole day. They didn't tell anybody in their, in their, in their they, you know, they didn't, they didn't preview any property. They didn't, they didn't do any lead gen. They didn't test any past clients. They didn't write any personal notes. They did no videos. They did nothing that day. And yet they're wondering why things aren't working. Let me tell you something. There are people, myself included, that are doing everything I just said every day, and it still ain't working. So if you ain't doing nothing, it's really not only not going to work now, and ain't going to work down the road, and and you, you're going to be sitting here in January and February, and you're going to be unhappy. You're going to probably be broke or broker, and you are not, at that point, going to be able to do a good job for anybody. Okay? That rant's over. Wow. <laughs> This is great stuff. You know, some of you on this call are probably going, man, I sure wish I was, I had the confidence of Elgin and Nate, but I guarantee you, most of you would not want to go through, and I'll say this word, forgive me, you would not want to go through the shit that Nate and Elgin has gone through to get to this point. Some of us, some of us, we, we have commission breath. It's all over our mouths and you just got to get strong within yourself. You know, I went on a listing appointment the other day and I comped it out. It was about 8.15. This guy wanted to list it for 1.2 million in a good area. It was 8.15? 8.15. He wanted 1.2 million and that was his bottom line. I told him that I know a lot of agents that it would take his listing and I am not the right guy. Now, I don't do as much production as Nate and Elgin, but did I want that listing? Absolutely. But after the years of getting beat up, I said, God bless you. I'm walking out. And I walked. Most people would stay at the door like a puppy dog and just go, yeah, I'll list it for 1.2, 1.3, and we'll just do whatever we got to do. No, I've been down that road before, and it it turns out ugly. It really does. So when you see Nate and Elgin being so strong, they have gone on so many appointments, got their teeth kicked in, and they have to be nice and cordial. Then they go back and tell their wives, and they're all pissed off. I get it, guys, because a lot of people on here are not experienced as Nate and Elgin. So anybody else have any questions? I love this dialogue. I love the script. Because this is real stuff. Elgin, go ahead. One, one other thing to, re, to, re, to remember, you guys, uh, or some of you guys not even to remember because you haven't experienced this yet, particularly with the new policies, there is going to come a time. I don't know when the time is going to be, but there is going to come a time where it's going to be more of a, a quote unquote, even market or a buyer's market. And uh, if you're on the listing side and you treat these buyer's agents, Badly, when the when and when it becomes a market 
to where the buyers have a little bit more control and you're sitting there begging for people to show your homes and all of that, you, you better remember how you treat people in this market. You treat them because the market will the market will change. There's going to be a time when all of you that have these buyer contracts and 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 are in control of your clients are going to experience a, 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 a much better market than you may be experiencing at this particular point. So don't think that it's just going to always, always be this way. And kind of like Nate said too, you know, on the listing side, man, listen, you better, you, 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 you should, again, just like on the buyer side, you are negotiating with your client for what your value and for what your worth is. I don't, I, I don't, I, I, yeah, you know, I, and Nate teases me about this sometimes, but I don't have, I even in this case, I don't have a listing that I'm not at least three and a half on 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 my side. That's great. I, I, it, 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 I mean, I mean that, and that's 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 the value that I bring. That's what that's what I'm going with. Now, I'm not saying that that there won't be some that I won't have that are going to be less than that. Of course, there will be. But I will tell you that the majority of the time, the stuff that 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 Nate is saying, the stuff that I'm, I'm hopefully are properly articulating to you, if this stuff works seven or eight times out of 10 are you better off than the stuff that you're doing right now that works one or two times if it works seven or eight times out of 10 man that's when in some sports you make the hall of fame i mean if you if you can if you can hit the ball seven out of ten so hey you know what you just just um but then you got to keep swinging if you guys aren't swinging i mean, I, I i would i would tell all you guys to have an honest conversation with yourself and ask and, and 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 opened up your calendar from the last ninety days. Don't just open up yesterday, and actually see how many conversations have you had uh, 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 with 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 buyers or sellers, or who? How many conversations? And you you know you look back and you spend ninety days and you've had like ten conversations and a couple of personal oh. notes. Dude, you're you're gonna drown. So on 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 my team, if anybody wants to come to me and get personal coaching and personal help, the first thing I say is, can I? See your log where you made 10 calls, where you've had 10 conversations a day. They don't ever ask for anything. That's right. They don't want to show me their seer. And then I say, why don't you have a database? You're complaining you're not making enough money. You won't create a database. I'm too busy. I'm this and that. And I'm 25 years doing this. This is my open house book from this weekend, right? And the and this says the yellow, I put it in Sierra. This is my CRM, CRM, CRM address names there's all my I already did it for the weekend so i just built my database another eight people names boom boom and then they get then they get my postcard then they get my email and then when i do the open house again i'll still do it until that database is two thousand three thousand of people that have met you that's how then you just take orders so you know i don't typically have to get new business i've been doing it to be honest with you i've been doing it because i got kind of scared that a lot of my people are getting older I'm in my fifties now. They're not selling. Hey, us. hey, hey, hey. Yeah, no, older, but here's what I mean by older. I'm in my fifties now. So my client base, a lot of them have their houses paid off, almost paid off. They're downsized. They're retiring. A lot of my police officer clients. So they're not just buying properties for fun. So I'm like, hey, I got to meet the 20 somethings and the 30 somethings. But here's what I'll tell you. If when I say a little older or mature, whatever that is, right. They respect I get so I get treated so well from the 28s to 35s, right? Because they're like, this guy makes me comfortable. He's been doing this a lot of years. He's been doing this and doing that. Now, I took Garrett, my son, to his first open house this weekend. He's 23 to show him how to do it. He was kind. He was courteous. He was doing that. He could 100% go show property, but they wanted to know I was there, right? So if I said we were a team and I met the client and he went out and showed, no problem but they feel comfortable with that. So use whatever you have to, but you got to still grind. This is the open house book after 25 years. I built my business on it. People still want to meet people face to face. Awesome. That is great news. Anybody have any questions so far? Okay. So a um, couple things. Great call, by the way. A couple things. I know Michael and Elgin have their calendar. I, I've started a calendar on the winter circle. And what I'm doing is I'm starting to bring some new people into the group. For example, uh, tomorrow we have, well, Elgin and Michael have their, 
their own calendar and they have. But on Tuesdays at 1.30, we have Brent Gove with the Brent, what is it? Uh, Zoom with Brent, live.com. Everybody should be on that call. Uh, that's 1.30 Pacific Standard Time. Also, um, my coach is Eric Orland, and he's in Miami. And if you ever want to see the EXP Explained, that's on Wednesdays at 3 o'clock. Also, I do tomorrow at 12.30, Randy Bird does a model explained. And the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want you guys to get sick and tired of Elgin, Nate, and myself. These are other leaders that may relate to you better than us, and I'm giving you a variety. So that's that's something I'm very excited about. Also, I want to let you go, guys know that you need to write this down, everybody. The Commercial Model Explained.com. Brent Gove's newest commercial model explained. And this is a way for you guys to go after commercial agents. Now, I've never done commercial, but if somebody says to me, Frank, do you do commercial? I said, hell yes, because we now have a partner you'll see on the video. His name is Paul Frank, very successful for six years, said no to EXP, and he joined last month. He is a beast. Him and Brent did the commercial model explained. Chris, can you put that down in the chat as well? On it. You guys need to check that out today and send it to your commercial people. If you've never done commercial, don't worry about it. Get a referral check. Somebody called me and he's got a multiplex for $7.5 million. He says, do you do commercial? And I went, I'm your huckleberry. <laughs> so that was some exciting news that I heard last week. And I wanted to share it with you guys. That's great, Frank. That's great. Yeah, because I know, Nate, you've called me about commercial people. Everybody's been, everybody's been asking for the new EXP 2.0 model explained. And I believe that is coming out within the next week. Awesome. Yeah. So I'll be yeah. passing that on, on to you. All right. So as we're wrapping up, does anybody have any comments? questions or anything they'd like to say. I yes, Frank, say I want to make my contribution. Yeah. Yes. First, uh, thank you for everybody that shared. Definitely, I made some notes. And a lot of times, it's not the new information. It's just a refreshment and cementing the information that we have. But what if there is a team for today, I would actually call it negotiation. So based on what Nate and Elgin have shared, then negotiation is the name of the game. It always has been but for several reasons. One of the thing is that on the listing agreement and on the buyer representation agreement, it highlighted in several pages, in every page actually, in bold, that commissions are negotiable. So that's already something that California Association of Realtors, NAR, and everybody would like to make sure that our buyers and sellers know. And that's exactly now, as both Nate and Elgin shared, it's very critical that we hold on to our fiduciary. That means if you're representing a seller and you're telling the buyer, yeah, my, my, my sellers are willing to give X percentage and you don't know what the offer looks like, you might actually have lost that poker game. You already showed your card before you could actually make an assessment. So not only is the right thing to do, but then also there would be attorneys coming to this game and basically there would be lawsuits based on just technicalities and we cannot say oh sorry i didn't know it didn't matter what the what it is but they would get you and if you ever have been to a lawsuit you can just have to be named you don't have to do anything wrong but the time that it consumes is actually make you to basically not want to do this ever again the other thing is that if there is one thing on the buyer representation that i do not like and i want to get your opinion is the time frame is three months. Three months, in my opinion, it should be when we list buyers, like the sellers, it should be a time frame that is reasonable. The reasonableness is a vocabulary that he used in the court. Attorneys use it like sugar candy. However, the, the, the three months and 90 days, three months 
is too short because when you work with a first-time home buyer, and as Nate also shared and, and Elgin, you work with them, you educate them, you let them maybe they'll go to one or two deals, you coach them, but they don't listen. So by the time that they start listening, it's already three months. And then guess what? They go to an open house, they meet Nate, they meet Elgin, they are experienced and they say, come to daddy, come to me and I would make it happen. And then of course they make it happen because that now they're coachable. They took the training from Aria is my 25 years. I divulged everything in a buyer consultation and now they make their errors. They're getting a perfect buyer and I'm losing them. So that's the part that I do not like. And that's why I always work with buyers more. All my listings are referrals of the buyers. As a matter of fact, motto is work with the buyers so great so that when you when they want to sell it, you become the listing agent. And I have done that 90% of the time. Most of my clients are doing three, four, five, six deals. And I don't do marketing. I don't do calls. I'm the laziest agent. When it comes to marketing, I suck. So, I mean, with that, I'm actually surprised how I'm in business. But what I'm saying <laughs> is that you always want to do the right thing. You want to build a relationship. And that's also another pointer. You want to build a relationship with both the buyers, the sellers, and also the other side, making it pleasant. I have a listing and I got a call last week and I already put the agent's name and the property that I connected with them first. So a call came in with Root on one of the properties. It was a mobile home last year. And then when she came, I said, hi, Ruth, how can I be of service? She was just surprised. She said, oh my God, I didn't know. I mean, how do you recognize me? I said, because you were the listing agent in my last deal and you were very, you were wonderful to work with. I want to reciprocate that, right? I mean, right from the get-go. Then I said, well, let me tell you something about the listing so that this way you can actually bring the right buyer. But relationship matters. So negotiation, relationship, and the other part is, Yes, do addition by subtraction. I have learned that from one of my mentors. And when you're desperate, you want to take work with every buyer, with every seller. Do not do it. Addition by subtraction. There are some people that you better never work with. As a matter of fact, one of my prayer to our God is, God, don't put me in front of someone that I would regret, that maybe I cannot help. Let me be a blessing to people that they come on my path and always add value. Make sure that you are the upper hand and adding value, serving. I just came from John Maxfield Leadership and after spending thousands of dollars being a certified mentor with him and going to disk analysis and many other, other, other things that I'm up to nowadays. But one thing that I came away is the high road leaders are the leaders that they're serving people. You become a servant at the end. But until then, when it's all about you, you actually haven't even scratched the leadership opportunities. And I think we need more leaders in our industry. Thank you. No, thank you. Back to you. Uh, I I agree with the ninety uh, with the ninety day. That's that's BS. All right, one more, a uh, couple more things. Uh, remember, contracts class is always Wednesdays at nine thirty in the California Broker Room. That's where you're really going to get your education. I have two questions for you. Are we allowed to put uh, commissions in the MLS? No. Okay. Are we allowed to put commissions on our social media? No. Well, yes. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Go figure that one. So no, you can put I, I it on something. You can put it on your website. You can put it on social media, but you can't put it in the MLS. Aria, I, really quick. What I want to add is. When you do things like this, because this is an uncharted territory, yes, you can do it, but other people would try to maybe use it against you. That means you make sure you use your DRE number. You have to make sure your social media ad is in compliance or they might get you for something else because you did something wrong. And I, and I, would, I would say don't do it anyway, even if you're allowed to do it, because here's why. It's not a contractual agreement through the it's not a contractual agreement if it's on there. You, you're going to end up paying it if you put it on there because then it's negotiable. And then the offer comes in low and your client says, well, you didn't put in there. I had to put two and a half percent. Boy, I would stay away from it. I wouldn't put it anywhere. I Would you, Elgin? I wouldn't put it. Would you? I have one thing to say. Follow the rules.
<laughs> Follow the rules. Stop looking for workarounds. <laughs> Just do the I work. Did. Stop looking for workarounds, man. Mm -hmm. Do the work. It's, it, it, it's easy to just say, no, I'm not doing none of that crap. I'm just doing this because it's the rule. And then you get it like no trouble. But yeah. the, rule. The, rule, the rules are given to us. And do you know what is the name of the rule? It's already put in blank. Everything is negotiable. Send it in. Let me present. Let me see what we can do. Let's work together. Let's make it happen. Like Gil Albiani says, write it on a napkin. I don't care. Let me send me something. I will present. I want, I'm a deal maker. Deal or no deal? Are you solid? All right, everybody. Have a great week. If you need anything, please get a hold of Elgin, Nate, or myself. Great call. If you guys want, we do send a copy of this out. And I put it on my YouTube channel. You can put it on your YouTube channel. We're very free in that. And I just really enjoy everybody's company. We'll see everybody here next Monday. Have a great week, everybody. Thank, Thank you, all. you guys. Appreciate